So in today's video, we're talking about inspiration and we're also working with N-Scale because I miss it and I like it and they make it like that. Okay, okay, all you HO guys, before you get all huffy and you decide to turn this video off, don't because all these things apply to you, whether you like it or not. It doesn't matter what scale you're in, graffiti is graffiti, whether it's the real world or HO or even end scale and any other scale in between. For those of you who don't know me, my name is Tim and I love all things model trains, but I mostly specialize in weathering and graffiti. I'm an end scaler, always have been, probably always will be, but that doesn't mean I don't love every other scale of model railroading. Model railroading is model railroading to me, and although it's fun to poke fun at HO and how huge it is and obnoxious it is and it takes up way too much room, <laughs> I love all skills, and I honestly, I really do enjoy modeling HO, and that's why these last couple of videos have been in HO scale, because it's a lot of fun, and also because my brother models HO and I was given a huge box of cars to work on from him. But I decided to take a break from that because I was scrolling the internet for inspiration. And that's what we're gonna talk about today is where my inspiration comes from. A lot of times people will just go on to Google and they'll find something that they like and they'll copy it. Now, I know that if you're an artist or a musician or a photographer, if you work hard at your craft and then someone comes along and copies it, that's a problem. <laughs> I don't I don't care who you are. I I would find that annoying if it were me. So I decided very early on that I didn't want to keep copying what I saw and I'd rather do stuff for myself. Now, that doesn't mean that I can't be inspired by what I see. Now, I know that there have been times where I've gotten the exact car with the exact road number that I've also seen pictures of and it has graffiti and I've copied that graffiti. But I feel like that can be more justified because you're copying reality in a sense. You're modeling exactly what you see. Now you might think otherwise. You might think that it's perfectly fine. It's your layout, you can do what you want. And I agree with that, but I'm just voicing my opinion. So what I wanted to do today is kind of take you through my thought process of how I come up with inspiration and how I can kind of find that balance where I'm right up to the line of copying, but not necessarily copying because sometimes it's, sometimes it's tough. You get a little bit of writer's block, so to speak, or artist's block. Is that a thing? <laughs> I don't know. But I want to show you a picture that I found today when I was going through the internet. It's a Union Pacific, Union Pacific. <laughs> It is a Union Pacific refrigerator car and it has some pretty fresh graffiti on it. And otherwise, it's not really that weathered. I mean, it's probably kept pretty clean and the graffiti is probably pretty fresh. So there's not a ton of weathering that needs to be done if you were to replicate this, but I don't want to replicate it to a T. But what I can do and what I will do because I have a very similar Union Pacific reefer car it's just a different road number. I mean, there might be other differences too. I'm not really much of a rivet counter to be honest with you. So I truthfully don't know, but it looks to me like it's pretty much the same car. The only difference that I can see is that the road markings are in a completely different spot. You'll notice that in the actual car, they're a lot higher up and they're actually in one line instead of in two lines like it is on my model. But like I said, I'm not much of a rivet counter, so I'm not gonna let that bother me. However, what I am going to do is I'm going to mask off the road numbers like I did in last week's video. If you have not seen that video, check it out right here. I talked about the three different kinds of graffiti and you might get some information out of that. It is HO, so if you're here for the end scale, I'm sorry, it's HO, but you'll get over it because it's cool graffiti and it's a lot of fun. But what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna follow the same kind of style with the bubbly letters and the yellow writing and the red in the background, and I'm gonna show you how you can take an idea and run with it and make it your own. So I've got my sketchbook and I'm just gonna make some letters, make some words up 
I don't even need to make actual words. You could make an actual word if you wanted to, but I'm just gonna make a word because a lot of times it's just a made up nickname that people are graffitiing. So I'm going with Chumby because I feel like it. And I think that the letters are gonna look good together. So I'm just gonna quickly write out C-H-U-M-B-Y. And that'll be that. On the other side of the car, there were three letters and it was D-E-K. I'm gonna change it to be D-E-F. It's similar, but it's different enough that no one's gonna come for me. So we're gonna work on Chumby and we're just gonna, nice and loose bubbly style, just gonna draw it out. Sometimes I wish you could see through my hand because I know that my hand gets in the way when I'm drawing, but it's difficult. It's difficult to find that right angle where my hat's not in the way <laughs> and my hand's not in the way. And the thing I like about sketching it out too is you can see what works and what doesn't work with your letters before you actually commit to doing it on a car. All right, so we now have chumby and deaf, apparently. Made up words, I love it. So now we're gonna get our car in here. I'm gonna fast forward this part cause uh, you don't need to see all of this. I literally just drew it for you. Let's get on to actual graffiti now. Today we're not using paint markers like we've been using in the past. I'm gonna show you something if you don't have paint markers. This is regular craft paint. This is actually neon, which I've only used a couple of times, but it's pretty cool. It glows in the dark and all of that kind of stuff. Truthfully, I just needed a yellow. I just happened to have this neon stuff, so I thought, why not? Let's just use it. Literally only a drop of this stuff is gonna last you the entire car. And what I like to use for painting the cars, if I'm using paint, is actually a Q-tip. Now I just get a little bit on the end of the Q-tip, not too, too much. I actually roll the tip into the paint and I just get a little bit and then I actually stipple it on like you would with a sponge. And it's good to do light coats. Several light coats is better than one thick coat, I find. The nice thing about doing light coats as well is you can still see the pencil lines through the paint and that will help you with your outline later on. So funny story, I wanted to actually go live today. I'm filming this right now, it's Wednesday, and I wanted to go live. I had some time and I had the trains running. My son was, was helping me in the basement like he always does. We were running trains and I thought, you know, it would be a perfect time for the two of us to go live. And uh, I go to set up my camera, I log into YouTube, and I, I go to go live, and it says that I have to wait 24 hours before I can activate live streaming on my account, because I've never gone live before on my, on my channel. I was so frustrated. <laughs> but uh, it's all good, at least now that, now that's out of the way, so that if I do plan on going live, I can uh, do that without having to wait through that whole process. So now that that's out of the way, expect some random lives from me because sometimes I'll just be working like I am now. Maybe I'm not filming and I'm just kind of working on some projects and uh, I'll just go live because like I said, it's nice to have the company sometimes. The yellow's not dry yet, but why not take this time to do the red as well. They can both dry together and then I will sit here incredibly bored watching paint dry. But I'm just gonna do the same exact method with the red and the red is just kinda there. The red is your background color. So I'm just gonna do a nice blotchy color everywhere and then obviously when I go back over it with my black outline you'll be able to see the defining lines between the two colors a lot better. So one of the other nice things about doing thin coats of paint is that it dries fast. It didn't really take all that long and we're good to go. So now the trick to get a really thin line with these and I'm sorry that you can't see 
I can't do this in such a way where I'm not blocking it with my hand because I really want to concentrate on getting an ultra thin line. And that's difficult with these markers, I will be honest with you, it's not the easiest thing. But what I'm doing is I'm barely touching the car with this marker because I want the absolute thinnest point of the paint tip to be touching the car. I just gotta hold my breath and just go for it. So unfortunately, when I do that, like I say, for right here, like you can't see what I'm doing and I can't even talk and draw at the same time because I'm a little bit stressed <laughs> that I'm gonna mess it up. So I know I keep cutting ahead, but <laughs> it was so difficult to do really thin lines and not be blocking with my hand. So here we are, I've got the outline done. Um, I wanna go back in and do some 3D effect now. So that's a little bit less stressful. It's still a little stressful, but it's not as bad because I don't have to worry too much about making thicker lines or thin lines rather, because that's the whole point of the 3D effect. And this marker is made for doing thicker lines. And again, I'm sorry if you see my hat <laughs> in the top down shot. That's never my intention. I was joking with my brother in the week because I'm trying to figure out the top down situation. I want to get it. I want to get it just right. And I was joking with my brother about how it would be funny if I put like a GoPro inside my hat so that when I lean in like this to work, you actually <laughs> you actually see what my hat sees. But he said that would be difficult to watch, and I, I kind of agree. <laughs> so I'm not gonna do that, but uh, sometimes you gotta do what you gotta do for the shot. Sometimes the more exaggerated you do your 3D, the better it looks. Just go for it. That's some three-dimensional letters right there. I'm just gonna take this red. And I'm gonna outline the splotchiness. Oh, that's the one. The metallic marker saves the day again. Holy, these things are becoming a celebrity on this channel. We got these nice little blue dots. This is a little darker than what they've got going on in here, but got one right there, one right there. Couple down here. If you remember from my three types of graffiti video, there are three types of graffiti. This one I would call a piece. Although it's bubble letters, I would still call it a piece because it's a lot more involved than a throw up. But you gotta add a tag. I mean, come on. You gotta sign your work. So I'll just sign it right there. And date it. Sometimes it's just a scribble. It doesn't even need to be anything fantastic. Especially end scale, like you could just you'd literally just and it would be a tag just like that. And I think that's pretty much it. I'm gonna go ahead and weather this. It's not gonna be much of a weathering job because I'm basing it off of this picture that I have here. And that is a pretty clean looking car. I was gonna use the grimy black weathering powder, but I'm actually just gonna use medium gray because I don't wanna go too overboard with it. I barely have anything on my Q-tip and I'm just, I'm doing a little more weathering than what I see in the prototype photo, but I'm just giving it some streaking. And then I'm going to come in with the clean Q-tip and I'm going to stroke that down. I really don't want this thing to weather too, too much because it looks so good clean. I'm going to do a little bit more along the bottom of this graffiti to just Make it look like it's gone at least a mile down the tracks. So I'm putting a little bit more grime on the door here. Just because I think it looks cool and there's no graffiti on this side. So that right there is super, super subtle. It's actually hard to see. Like I'm looking at it in the top down camera and it's hard to tell, but it's there. <laughs> I'm going to actually go just a little bit heavier just because I know that when I dull coat it, it'll probably fade a little bit, but not too, too much heavier. What I will do though, because it is a thing, is I am gonna add a little bit of rust to the reefer unit, because these guys rust pretty quick. Just gonna add a little bit in there. 
just a faint discoloration. It's hard to see because of the focus. Can you see that? Can you see that? If I do it this way. Can you see that? I'll show you a picture. How's that? And now, the moment you've all been waiting for, and by you, I mean Mark from m and Rails. This one's for you. I'm actually gonna get my mic a little bit closer this time for you. So, so here we go. Get that mic in real close. Get that camera in real close. And here we go. <laughs> you can't hear a thing. You can't hear a thing. So there you have it, folks. This is some end scale. Who am I kidding? I'm just gonna show you the final result on the rails because that's the easiest way to show you. And uh, we'll call it a day. So thank you guys so much for watching. I really appreciate you watching to the end. And uh, if you made it this far, leave a comment below. So if you like this video and you wanna see more content like this, please feel free to subscribe and don't forget to click the bell. What that does is that notifies you every single time I post a new video. And don't forget to share this video with a friend because I know you have Model Railroad friends. So share it with them. But once again, thank you guys so much for watching and remember, they make it like that.